so I'm just having my morning coffee. I'm gonna do a pretty simple makeup look because the only place that I really have to go is the grocery store. And then the rest of my to-do list today is just stuff that I need to do at home. So you may be wondering, Kate, what is on the agenda for today? So normally on Sundays, I do like to clean a little bit and I will be cleaning up, you know, just a little bit, just general, like wiping stuff down, putting clothes away, that kind of thing. But I don't have to do anything too intense because I literally just cleaned the other day and I didn't have a crazy weekend or anything like that. I had people over last night, but thankfully it wasn't, you know, a rowdy bunch. Like we just kind of sat and talked. So not much cleaning to do today, but I do need to go to the grocery store. I have to just pick up a few little things and then I'm having a little small dinner party with my best friend Cole and his boyfriend Paul Tuesday. So I do need to pick up a few things for that and then just some snacks for myself. I don't need much, just a few things. And then just general planning for like actual school, which is the most important thing today, obviously. I need to go into my planner and kind of map out all of the pages that I need to read for this week, any you know assignments that I need to be aware of or preparing for. And then I'm actually gonna be like reading and studying today as well, just to get ahead and make sure you know I have time to do everything for this coming week. And then I also need to edit a YouTube video and I'll probably talk more about how I edit and everything later. So stay tuned for that. So I'm just gonna do a really quick, simple look just to kind of brighten myself up because I don't know, I just feel like I kind of look puffy and like not awake yet. And it's literally like 11 in the morning. So I don't, I don't know what the deal is. I've just been really tired. So I don't use this a lot, but this is the Jergens like glow moisturizer and it also has SPF in it. So just gonna put a little bit of this on, hoping it'll give me a little bit of a glow. So I've kind of been thinking about some things that I could do with my channel, like different videos, just maybe still vlogs, but maybe centered around different topics or different themes. And I kind of wanna do like a full get ready with me because those are so popular on TikTok right now. And I don't know, like, I've always loved makeup and I'm pretty sure, I don't know if this is still up, so oh my god, please don't go look for it. But when I was like 15, 16, I did have another YouTube channel. I want to say it's taken down now because I was inactive on it for so long, but if you find it, like, you know, it's, you're going to get a good laugh. But I had a YouTube channel and it was mostly centered around makeup and I was really trying to do like the whole Meredith Foster vlog you know type situation if you know who that is you're an OG I still love her to this day but um yeah I don't know I've always liked makeup I've always liked talking about it and I don't know I just get kind of chatty when I'm just you know sitting here so let me know if you guys would be interested in like a full get ready with me from you know start to finish to me leaving for school. I'm just gonna go in with a little concealer. This is the Maybelline Fit Me kind. I'm a little bit dark under my eyes, so I just kinda wanna, you know, take care of that. Another video that is kind of, like I've kind of decided that I'm going to do it, but I just wanna make sure that I do it the right way, and that is what I spend in a week, and I am planning on including like how much tuition is and dividing that up by how many weeks are in the semester because I feel like there's not a lot of transparency about how much law school costs and in my opinion there's a lot of hidden costs that they do not tell you when you sign up to go to law school and I don't know like I just think there should be more transparency about how much it actually costs because I think one reason that really keeps people away from law school and it keeps certain demographics away from law school is the cost and that's just not how it should be because we need people from all socioeconomic backgrounds in law school and going on to become leaders in the legal field so I just think that would be kind of interesting and then I could also, you know, embarrass myself with how much I spend on coffee even though I have a nice coffee maker. And I know that Graham Stephan, he's like a huge like finance YouTuber, 
he reacts to these videos sometimes and I think it'd be so funny if he watched my video like my what I spend in a week video so let me know if you guys are even interested in that because if you're not then I probably won't do it but I really want to I just think it'd be so fun okay I'm just gonna go in with this Charlotte Tilbury beautiful skin foundation I wanted to do a BB cream but I can't find mine so I'm just gonna do a very little small amount of this and just kind of even out my skin tone another video that i'm super excited about is my amsterdam vlog so me and my friend allison we went to paris last year for spring break because she's in a grad program at eastern kentucky university right down the road our spring breaks just happened to line up and funny thing about me i am like pretty good at finding really good prices for like flights and airbnbs and I'm pretty strategic about it, if I do say myself. So we went to Paris last year and I wanna say the flight and the accommodation like together costed us way less than $1,000. So it was very affordable and you know, you're only young once and you're only able to travel so much, especially if you have a, you know, a demanding job. So we booked the flight, we said, screw it, we're gonna go, we're gonna have fun we decided to continue the tradition of going somewhere cool for spring break for this year. So we decided on Amsterdam as like a base. So I also had a lot of miles saved up through my travel credit card. So we're gonna be going to Amsterdam. And then from Amsterdam, we're planning on taking trains to like Germany, maybe Belgium, maybe Paris for one day because it's also centrally located. So stay tuned for that vlog. I'm so excited about it. And I feel like my editing skills and just my, you know, videography skills have advanced so much since this time last year. If you're interested in that, make sure you stick around. And if you haven't seen the Paris vlog, it's probably the video that I'm most proud of in terms of editing and just like, I don't know. It's just like a little time capsule of such a special trip, you know, with my best friend, my first time going to another country, and it was just a blast. So if you want some good vibes, some good travel vibes, make sure you go and watch that video. Okay, I'm just gonna warm up my face a little bit with this Essence contouring palette. I typically just use this lighter color. I'm kind of messy with this. I mean, it's, it really doesn't have to be perfect. I just use it to kind of give myself some dimension on my face and just warm it up. I do have a pretty round face, so this really helps to kind of give me some definition. So while I have you here and we're talking about videos, you know, that are in the works or that I've been thinking about doing, I am going to do a travel routine like from start to finish, pretty much pertaining to like coming up with an idea of somewhere to go for a trip, all the way to packing and like my airport tips and tricks. That probably, you know, won't be posted until mid-March, I would say, because I'm not gonna be traveling until then. That's when we're gonna go to Amsterdam, but... Big things coming. Next up, my favorite step blush. This is Essence Blush. As you all know, last week was my first week of class. And I guess I could give you all a little recap. So I'm taking Medical Liability, Constitutional Law 2, Healthcare Organizations and Finance, Criminal Procedure, and Environmental Law. So five classes this semester. I really like my schedule. Mondays and Thursdays are very, very busy because I'll, I have like all of my classes on those two days. And then Tuesdays and Wednesdays are very chill. I have two classes each of those days. Okay, I typically use two brow products. I like to go in with this NYX just clear gel first. And then on top of that, I go in with this NYX tinted brow gel. I don't typically use like a powder or anything like that. Just, I really just like to use brow gel when I'm being lazy. So compared to last semester, I definitely feel like I'm learning more. I obviously I appreciated my professors last semester. Don't get me wrong, but I already feel like I'm learning a lot more this semester and I'm much more interested in what I'm learning. But one thing that I don't love, so last semester i didn't get called on one time if you don't know 
professors in law school use the Socratic method. So you get cold called in class in front of everybody. And last semester, I didn't get called on once. None of my professors really cold called a ton. And it just never happened, you know, not complaining. But I already got called on twice the first week of class this semester. It is what it is. Like, I'm, I like to think that I'm used to it. I've been in this for a year and a half now, but it just never really gets easier, I guess, when you're someone that has a little bit of like public speaking anxiety like me. So yeah, I definitely don't love that. So my first cold call of the semester last week was in medical liability. I did not have the book yet. So I was working with like screenshots from a friend and they like, they were like on my computer, but they weren't all together. They were all out of order. And it wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. And then our tornado drill like went off like 10 minutes after my cold call. So I'm hoping everybody just forgot. I'm hoping the tornado drill overshadowed my subpar cold call. The second cold call for me for last week was in environmental law. Now, environmental law was supposed to be like my fun, just fun class because I'm I'm really interested in that. I don't necessarily see a career in that kind of stuff, but I'm, you know, interested in it and I care about it. And I also had natural resources law last semester, so I felt like I had a decent background, but I got cold called. There was one minute left of class okay so i was paying attention but also there was one minute left so i was like okay he's probably not going to call on anybody and i'll be danged if he didn't like go to his little list and he was like hmm miss willis and he asked me the one question that i could not answer he asked what a bio assai is and it was like a really obscure definition in this like case study that we read about carcinogens and how they test on rodents with pollution and just all this crazy stuff. I was like, I think I must have missed that. I'm really sorry because that's really all you can do if you don't know the answer and you can't quite frankly BS your way through the question. The best thing you can do is just say like, I must have missed that in the reading. Like, I apologize. And he wasn't mad. Like, he just kind of moved on and then like it was time to go. But I'm definitely going to have to like get on my stuff this semester because it's apparently going to be kind of brutal okay i'm not going to do any eyeshadow but i am going to just use some highlighter in some specific places on my face so i think this is ColourPop. the label has kind of rubbed off but it is called butterfly beach and i'm almost positive that it's from ColourPop. really like this highlighter and i just like to put it on specific places so cupid's bow little bit on my nose. I do my inner corners of my eyes to just kind of open them up a little bit and then on the brow bone. Okay, I'm gonna curl my lashes. Ever since Alex Earl on TikTok has gotten famous, I have been like anal about how I curl my eyelashes because the way that she does it just makes her lashes like look crazy. They look so good. So I've been trying her technique and she gets like right down to the root and curls them. So since I'm just going for a very minimalistic clean look today, I'm just gonna use the Merit mascara that I got from them a couple of weeks ago. This isn't sponsored by them or anything, but you guys know I love them. I'll put on some lip gloss when I get dressed and get downstairs, but I'm just gonna do a little bit of lip liner just to kind of, you know, outline my lips. Find that this stays on for a long time, so it kind of lasts all day. And that is the easy makeup look for today. When I'm not vlogging and taking breaks to like talk to the camera, it literally takes me like 10 minutes to do this look. Oh my God, I need to get my hair done. What? I did not realize it's been growing that much crazy i'm getting ready to just throw on something really comfy and then i will see you guys downstairs and update you on what i'm doing i just had to share look at all this cuteness hi rosie are you having your midday nap am i interrupting oh my god so cute all right i'm letting the car heat up because it is quite literally colder than a witch's titty in a brass bra outside and for that same reason, I am bundled up here. So I got this coat 
forever ago. I think it's from like JC Penney's or something. It's Liz Claiborne, I believe. And then I got this sweat set from Walmart. And I want to say the whole thing was probably like $20 max for the top and the bottom. And I don't know, I really like it. I think that it's perfect for days like today when I don't really have anywhere to be, but I still want to feel like somewhat put together. So I also just put a turtleneck underneath for extra warmth. That's my little grocery run outfit. So I will update you all when I get back. Okay, it's time for the weekly grocery haul. I did stop at Starbucks because I had a gift card and I'm just trying to use it up. And I don't know, my morning coffee this morning just really didn't hit the way that I wanted it to. So I stopped at Starbucks. I have a little hack. If you like just a plain latte, you can just get like two or three shots of espresso. I personally like blonde espresso on ice, add cream, and I think this was like $2.50 or something. Let's see. Well, it doesn't have the price, but it was under $3 for sure. And it's pretty good. You know, it's cheap and it hits the spot. So that's a little hack if you like plain lattes. So like I said, time for the grocery haul. I'm in a good mood today already, but I was walking into Kroger and there was this elderly gentleman coming out and he said, well, aren't you pretty? And you know, like I didn't take it any kind of weird way. I think he was genuinely just trying to be like a wholesome papaw. And it was just very nice and he was very, you know, respectful and everything. And it just made my day. Like just one little act of kindness. He totally made my day. So that put me in an even better mood. And it's a good thing I'm in a good mood because otherwise the cost of my groceries probably would have put me in a bad mood. I'm very privileged. My family helps me out and I don't want to complain too much because I'm thankful that I can like even buy groceries because there are people in the world that don't have access to groceries at all, you know? I hope this doesn't come off as me complaining, but so my groceries were $60, which that's usually the ballpark range that I like to stay in. I will say I have been going to Kroger and it's very expensive compared to like Aldi. Usually I could spend like, you know, $40, $50 at Aldi and be good. But y'all, I really did not even get that much stuff and it was $60. I did get a lot of meat and stuff, so like that's probably why. But I saw this TikTok of this lady and she had a receipt from Walmart, I think, for a few things and it was like $10 and it was from 2020. And she went back like this year and she got all of the same things, same, you know, quality, quantity, whatever and it costed her $15. So I definitely think there's some inflation going on, but whatever, I got my groceries, it's all that matters. So I got eggs and I've been making deviled eggs a lot, which is really random, but I just got a big thing because I've, I've just been eating a lot of eggs. So I got the 18 count. Also, I have seen a lot of people talk about this specific kind of coffee just on TikTok and you know, just in general. But I've seen a lot of people say that it's good and this was this was $5 and this will last me forever. So I've seen a lot of people use this with a mocha pot. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I do not have one of those, but I do have a French press. So I'll try this and let you guys know what I think. I do have an espresso, but I don't know if I need to clean it or what, but it just hasn't been hitting the way that I need it to. So I'm gonna alternate to the French press, try the Cafe Bustello Espresso Roast Coffee, and hope that I like it. Also, I got some wet cat food. I've been kind of alternating rosy between dry food and wet food because I read that wet food is better you know for their digestive systems and for their long-term health so i've been doing like three or four days out of the week um wet food instead of dry food i also got myself some flowers i usually treat myself to flowers once every two weeks or something like that just a little small self-care thing that i like to do also i got some chicken for 
meal prep or anything I want to use it for this week. I got some sweet tea because I have just been craving it a lot recently. So the remainder of this stuff is for my dinner party that I'm having Tuesday. So I'm going to be making some salmon. So I just got two things of it and there's like two cuts in each package. So I'm having, like I said, Cole and Paul over. So I'll need to use three cuts and then the extra cut of salmon. I'll just um, freeze it and use it later. Planning on making a little salad. So I just got some cherry tomatoes. I also have some olives to throw in the salad and um, purple onion and then probably like some feta cheese or something like that. Just something kind of simple. And then also to go with the salad, just some French baguette. I'll toast this up, serve it with some butter. And then I got some asparagus and then I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes. So that's the grocery haul. I'm gonna put all of this away and not really sure what I'm gonna do after that, but I'll let you guys know. Okay, I know I said that I don't have a ton of cleaning to do and that's true, but I do just have a couple of like organizing things that I wanna do. Like for some reason, this like clothing rack and ottoman area of my room always gets just so busy and messy. I think because like when I'm trying to find an outfit, I just kind of like throw it back there. But during the week, if I like have an outfit planned, it, it goes here. So I definitely want to get that cleaned off. I also need to hang up some things that I wash that I did not want to put in the dryer. And I just need to put some other clothes away. So that's what I'm going to do. I did just get in an order from Cider, which is a clothing brand that I work with sometimes. I primarily work with them on Instagram. So this isn't sponsored or anything like that. But I, like with my own money, bought a few things from them for my birthday coming up. Also just some staple pieces for my wardrobe and also for Amsterdam. So... Maybe I'll show you guys a couple of things that I got because I got some interesting stuff I like to think. Okay, so this is one of the things that I got from Cider and obviously I washed everything when it came in. I didn't want to dry it because it is just this knit material and this isn't my usual style, but I don't know. I think I can make it cute and I tried it on. I really like how it fits. It's just a classic, nice knit sweater. So hear me out. <laughs> This was kind of an impulse buy and I tried it on and I really like how it looks. I'm literally going to get demonetized. Okay, they're not naked. They're not naked. I think they have clothes on. Um, so it's just this little dress and I think the way that I'm going to wear it is to put it over a turtleneck because obviously it's cold and you know I, I can't just wear like a spaghetti strap dress in this weather. But it's definitely out of my comfort zone. You guys know I typically have a pretty like classic style, you know, classic neutral colors. But I just wanted to get out of my comfort zone a little bit. And this, this was just calling out to me. I don't know why. But it looks really cute on. And yeah, so that's another thing I got from Cider. So those were pretty much the two like coolest things that I got. Everything else is kind of just like a staple piece. But yeah, I'm going to put all of this away and try to address this whole area going on. And maybe even hang up a few things that I'm planning on wearing next week. Okay, so I kind of felt like it was important to mention this. Usually like once a month or if I order new clothes, I will go through my closet and pull out anything that I am just not wearing or not reaching for. So that is the product of that little routine that I have. So all of this stuff will go into a special bag and then when the bag is full, 
I will take it to Plato's Closet or Clothes Mentor and then they pretty much buy what they want and then whatever they don't want they donate it for me. Just kind of like a little efficient system that I have so I don't accumulate too many clothes, too many choices in the morning. I still have a lot of clothes but this is just the best way that I know how to ethically go about it because I'm making a little bit of money back on the clothes that I'm not wearing but then somebody else you know down the line is benefiting because they're getting donated so pro tip just go through your closet even if you don't want to even if it's overwhelming just do it you'll thank yourself later okay so since we're on the topic of fashion and accessories I wanted to thank today's sponsor Teddy Blake New York so if you guys remember I worked with Teddy Blake a couple of months ago and they were so kind to send me this beautiful bag and they asked me to kind of give you guys an update on the quality of the bag and kind of how it's held up over the past couple of months so as you can see the bag is still in perfect condition hardware looks great it has not faded at all. There's really no creasing and the handle still looks really good and I still love it just as much as the day that I got it. One thing I really love about Teddy Blake is that they offer a lot of variety in their bags. So I did step out of my comfort zone and I got this beautiful red bag. And since I have a pretty neutral wardrobe, it's been really easy to style it a lot of different ways. So if you missed my first video working with Teddy Blake, really their whole mission is providing luxury leather goods at an affordable price. And as someone who is a student and working with a fixed amount of money to spend on clothes and accessories, I can really appreciate that. And I know that you guys really appreciate that as well. So I'm excited to let you all know that Teddy Blake is having some awesome sales right now up to 75% off on a lot of their bags and if you miss the sale you can still use my code I'll put it somewhere on the screen and I also will have a link down below for you all but I just wanted to update you on the wear of the bag and how I've been enjoying it and I absolutely love it and I cannot recommend Teddy Blake enough if you're on the market for any kind of leather goods make sure you check them out and make sure you use my link and yeah thank you so much Teddy Blake for working with me on this video all right my room is all ready to go I really don't have anything else to do in terms of like prep or anything like that makeup table still going strong on keeping it nice and tidy and honestly it's just improved my morning so much to have a very consolidated organized makeup bag and then all of my hair stuff here it's really just changed the game and then all of my stuff that's drying is kind of taking up all the real estate on the rack. So I guess I will plan outfits and stuff like that later because I really don't have anywhere to put anything at the moment. But looks good. I'm just happy that this little area, you know, looks better. And I guess I am going to head downstairs and get started on reading and planning for class. down to film this part of the video like an hour ago but then my camera died so I just made a really quick late lunch and ate and I feel ready to tackle my to-do list now. So I'm going to show you all how I fill out my planner and how I kind of prepare for a whole week of law school. I've talked about this a little bit in some of my previous videos but I've never really gone like in depth. So that's what this part of the video is going to be. Now tomorrow is Monday and it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day so we won't have class and if you're you know able I just recommend taking a minute to learn about him and his life and the impact that he had. Just such a trailblazer, such an amazing person. I definitely don't, you know, want to take away from that, but just saying like we don't have class tomorrow because of that. So planning for this week is going to be a little bit different just because of that. Now normally my busiest days are Mondays and Thursdays because on those days I have like all five of my classes and I go from like 8.30 a.m. to like 4 p.m. So obviously, since I won't have class on Monday, just gonna look a little bit different. I'm probably gonna use tomorrow to read and 
also to meal prep and things like that that I just didn't do today. So let's get started. So this is my physical planner. It is from Target. I want to say it was like $10, $15 if that. I really don't write like assignments or anything like that in it. I will put in like law review, deadlines, things like that. But as far as just day to day like class assignments, that's not what this is for. I do deadlines for law review, work dates, birthdays, appointments, things like that in here. So that's basically what's in here. So I use a digital to-do list to stay on top of my readings and assignments for class every day. I just find that that's a lot easier because in a paper planner or a physical planner, if anything changes, you have to go back in and you know erase it. It's takes too much time. If you use a digital planner, it's so easy to just go in, you can move things around and really make it fit to your lifestyle. I use Microsoft To Do and it's really great because you can have it as an app on your laptop and then you can also have it as an app on your phone and they sync up. So if you change something on the laptop app, it's gonna change also in your phone as long as you have them synced up. It's just very efficient and just easy to use. So like I said, I use Microsoft To Do because I just think it's easy to use and I like that you can customize it. A lot of people like, um, I think it's like Noted or Notability or something like that. I've tried to use it and I just don't like it. I just think it's too much effort and I just have really established how I organize and how I use Microsoft To Do. So that's what I use, make sure you use you know what works for you so the way that i do this is i log into canvas which is basically like blackboard if you've ever used that it's just what the university of kentucky uses um so you can like access your course materials and all of that stuff so i log into that i have all of my classes lined up and i basically just go into each classes syllabus every week and I just copy over what's on the syllabus into my to-do list and then I add the dates to it and everything in Microsoft to-do. So as an example, I'm going to go through um, constitutional law 2 for this whole week and transfer it over to Microsoft to-do so you all can see kind of how I do it for one class. So over here in Microsoft To Do, as you can see, I have a folder for every class and then random folders for my law review, um, for content workshop, uh, my side hustle job that I have, YouTube ideas, TikTok ideas, and then like I said, all of my classes. So here's Constitutional Law 2. And then some professors will do a separate syllabus with like all their rules and expectations and then an assignment sheet so this class has an assignment sheet so that's what we're going to look at when we're planning out our week so the way that this professor kind of structures his class each number pertains to a day so like for example this was day one of class and this was day two of class and this was day three of class. So day four's reading will be this coming Wednesday. So I literally just copy this, type in casebook, paste the page numbers, and then you go here, add a due date, pick a date, and then it will be Wednesday the 18th. And then when you go to this plan section, it has it here. And so, yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Since I will have this class on Thursday of this week as well, I'll go ahead and go to assignment number five. I'll just copy this, add it into Constitutional Law 2, add it into the 19th. And then when I go up here to this plan section, it'll already have it you know, in one cohesive place. And then you can just see other little random things that I have to do tomorrow. I'll do that for every single class. It'll all pretty much be there. And I can refer back to it, check it off when I get it done. And I don't have to continue to like 
go to the class assignment sheet or syllabus. It's just all here on the app on my computer or on my phone. I find that doing this at the beginning of the week just really helps me to feel like I'm more organized and more on top of things. And it's also helpful to see like, okay, Thursday I may have a heavy, you know, reading load. So I'm going to need to take extra time on Wednesday to study and read. So it just helps with like laying out plans and laying out my life. So that's how I do it. That's how I organize it all. So if you have any questions about that or how I organize, just let me know and I will answer it to the best of my ability. So I'm going to fill the rest of this in with everything else from my other classes and then we'll go through and kind of see what it looks like because I think it's kind of like oddly satisfying. So give me just a second. So as you can see, I have everything filled in, don't have class tomorrow, so I just have a couple of random little things here that I need to get done. I'll probably add in a couple of more things in here, you know, as I figure out what I'm doing tomorrow. But yeah, everything else is filled in. Tuesday and Wednesdays, I only have two classes per day, so this checks out. And Thursday is my busiest, one of my busiest days along with Monday, usually, so it all checks out. So this is what it looks like and I've actually already read this so I'm just going to check that off and that's what it looks like when you check something off. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much how I plan and keep it all together. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and read everything for Tuesday. So that's going to be environmental law pages 84 to 96 and then 143 to 158 and then for criminal procedure i'll be reading page 225 to 240. pretty heavy reading so before i get started um studying and reading for tuesday i got a package and i honestly did not expect it to get here today but i got the notification and i was like well okay so I figured I may as well show you all what I got. So this is probably what I'm most excited about. This is the death and life of great American cities. I just thought this would be something really interesting to read. It's by Jane Jacobs. I'll just read you all a short snippet from like the description on the back. A direct and fundamentally optimistic indictment of the short-sightedness and intellectual arrogance that has characterized much of ur urban planning in this century. The death and life of great American cities has, since its first publication in 1961, become the standard against which all endeavors in that field are measured. So interesting. I'm really interested in like why we don't have walkable cities in America and urban planning, city planning, whatever you want to call it. So I just wanted to pick this up so I can be more educated on that subject. So next thing, kind of random, I saw this outfit on Pinterest and I'll, I'll try to put it up here somewhere. It's basically just this girl and she's wearing like all denim and then she's wearing a yellow bucket hat. And I want to try to recreate that look in Amsterdam. And also I just thought like, I really like bucket hats in general, um, so I'll definitely wear this like more than just a couple of times, but I want to recreate the outfit, and so I bought this on Amazon. It's really cute. I like it. Oh my gosh. Okay. So cute. Love. Now I really do have to start reading, so catch you later.
so I'm finished with looking at schoolwork. Funny story, I left my environmental law book at school. So I'm going to have to go pick that up tomorrow and do the reading for that class tomorrow. So instead of reading for that class, I just went ahead and read ahead in criminal procedure and then my healthcare organizations and finance class. So I still knocked off a lot of my workload for the following week. And yeah, I'm just really happy with how much I got done. I'm very proud of myself. Pushed myself a lot today. And honestly, I'm kind of past the point of where I can even like read or be productive anymore tonight. But I still need to edit my YouTube video. I edited it a little bit earlier and I made some good progress on it. So I just kind of have to finish it up. No one has really ever asked me like how I edit videos, but I've literally just used iMovie and I use Canva for my thumbnails and any little special effects that you guys see in my videos. For music, I use Epidemic Sound. It's like $15 a month, which is expensive, but I feel like I really use music to set the like overall feeling and vibe of my videos. So it's worth it to me um, to pay that. So I'm gonna finish that up. It can usually take me like two hours to edit a video, depending on how long it is. But since I've already made progress on this one, I'm hoping like 45 minutes to an hour tops and then I'll probably do my nighttime routine and crawl in the bed. Feels good to know that I do not have to be up at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, have the day off. And yeah, I'm just going to use it to be productive, try to get some more stuff done, get ahead, have another video to edit for YouTube. And yeah, so I'm probably going to end the vlog here. You guys have seen my nighttime routine a million times and I don't really have anything special that I'm adding to it. I'm just going to shower, do my skincare. I'll probably do my gratitude and then journal a little bit. And then also, um, I think I talked about this in a video like a week ago. I've been doing Duolingo every single day and I do have a 12 day streak. So I'll be doing that and then I'll go to bed. Planning on starting a week in my life tomorrow because I did a poll and you guys seem to prefer week in my life videos over day in my life videos. So yeah, that's it y'all. Thank you for watching this Sunday reset. Thank you for watching me prepare for a week of law school. Make sure you subscribe and follow me on all social media. Keep up with me on there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.